Hello everyone, how are you today? Welcome to my channel. I am Dr. Paramjeet and you are watching Dr. Education. Those who don't know me, I am a consultant, physician and cardiologist in Yashoda Super Speciality Hospital, Nehru Nagar, Ghaziabad, Delhi NCR and this is my channel. In this channel, I make simplified medical explanation videos and I tell you in a very simplified language why you got sick and how you can get better. The information given in this video and all my videos are not my opinion. It's a universally accepted healthcare information taken and referenced from the internationally accepted US National Medical Library. That means you can trust the information given in this channel. So guys, today's topic is hypothyroidism and the diet in hypothyroidism. We are going to touch this topic and I am going to create a series of these videos because this subject is a very vast subject. So I have already made a video on hypothyroidism in the past in which I had explained what exactly is hypothyroidism but I had done that in Hindi. So this time I will make it in English and we will talk about how do you actually develop hypothyroidism, what are the reasons for you to develop hypothyroidism because because only when you pinpoint the reason only then you can take care of the problem once and for all second we'll see how you can diagnose it what are the symptoms and signs what are the reasons physiological conditions how the symptoms occur and we'll study the treatment as well and then we'll come on to the diet what diet a thyroid hypothyroid patient should take not only that we will discuss what diet a hyperthyroid patient should take so we'll discuss all these things in this series so guys if you haven't subscribed my channel already then do that and don't forget to hit the bell icon because that's how you'll receive the notification of the next upcoming video so guys let's start with hypothyroidism If you want to know about health and have health concerns, then subscribe to my channel and hit the bell icon. You'll be notified about all upcoming videos. Thyroid gland is one of the most important endocrine organ present in your body and it is present in your neck. It is present in front of your neck and it is present just above your collarbones here. This gland makes a hormone that is very important It controls every single cell in your body. It controls how your cell will use energy. It acts like oil in your car. So your car runs faster, better with oil, sufficient oil. Same way, if you have sufficient quantities of thyroid hormones, then your metabolism in each and every cell of your body, each organ of your body runs smoothly. And if there is any deficiency of thyroid hormones, then what will happen? All your metabolic processes, all the processes of all organs will become slow. It will become slow. So what will happen? Think about it. If, if your bowel movements become slow, then your feces will stay more time inside the intestine and more water will get absorbed and what will you have and you will have constipation you will have hard stools so hypothyroid you can have constipation hard stools then because your core metabolic rate is decreased what will happen you will generate less heat inside your body so you will be colder you will be more sensitive to cold temperatures then obviously you will have less energy so you will feel tired you will feel fatigued you will have weakness what will happen because all the metabolism is very slow so your body is burning less energy so all the energy all the food etc are getting stored so you will not burn fat that's why you will start getting fat you will get you will gain weight as you get fat and as your muscles and joints become slow you'll have joints pain and muscle pain you can have dry skin paleness your hairs your 
your hairs can become brittle thin you can have hair loss your fingernails can become brittle so these are the early symptoms of hypothyroidism where your entire body is becoming slow what happens in a later stage in the later stage what happens your taste and your smell the power of taste and smell also decreases then you cannot taste food that well your voice will become more hoarse hoarseness of voice will be there your face will become puffy your hands and feet will also get swollen your speech will give your speech will also become slow you have thickening of the skin the skin becomes thick and your eyebrows will become thin your body temperature will become low your heart rate will become low all these things happen in hypothyroidism just because the main catalyst the main metabolic hormone thyroxin is not there in your body in the sufficient amount so let's see why this happens what is the reason for hypothyroidism thyroid gland produces two hormones t3 and t4 and t3 is the active hormone and t4 is the pro hormone which gets converted into t3 in the liver and the kidneys thyroid hormone produces only 20% t3 and rest 80% is all t4 so this is also important in further discussion we'll discuss this so let's see why your thyroid gland can start producing less amount of all these hormones the most commonly these problems of hypothyroidism is seen above the age of 50 in especially commonly seen in women so most common causes include thyroid injury yes if there is a thyroid gland injury that means either an infection or an inflammation in the thyroid glands then your thyroid gland can get damaged and can become useless and they will not produce that much amount of hormone which they were producing before so how this injury can happen one the injury can happen because of your own immune system if there is an antigen if there is a infective agent which comes inside your body and your body its immune system produces antibodies against that antigen and because that antigen structure is similar to thyroid gland these antigens which your body produces also attack your thyroid gland that's why your thyroid gland becomes damaged that's one way because of autoimmune disease the second way is infection if your thyroid gland itself gets infected by viruses like very commonly there is a cold virus which is quite common then other respiratory infections can also go to your thyroid gland and damage your thyroid gland then the third reason is pregnancy very commonly postpartum people or pregnant women become hypothyroid so that is called as postpartum thyroiditis other causes can include medicines there are medicines which are which can damage your thyroid or are goitrogenic goitrogenic means any substance which cuts down which decreases the iodine intake of your thyroid gland so any substance including food including medicines including chemicals if they are taken or exposed to you and your iodine uptake of your thyroid gland becomes low are goitrogenic so certain medicines like uh, lithium amiodarone are medicines which decrease the iodine uptake of your thyroid gland because iodine is the main substance from which your thyroxine hormone is produced that's the main substance other substances are there but iodine is the main substrate then there are other causes including if there is actually iodine deficiency in your body if you don't eat enough iodine if there is iodine deficiency you can have that or if you have surgically removed a part of your thyroid then you have you can have thyroid hypothyroid <laughs> then certain types of tumors also lead to hypothyroid like pituitary tumors or radiation therapy or cancer therapy for cancer patients can also sometimes damage your thyroid hormone so all these reasons are there for you to develop hypothyroidism and it's not just your diet so all hypothyroidisms cannot be treated by just diet you need to understand that if most of your thyroid gland is damaged then you will have to take medicines you will have to take 
thyroid hormone replacement for your whole life obviously diet can help but not all so all these reasons are there for your thyroid gland to get damaged and therefore produce less amount of thyroxine and we have seen how less amount of thyroxine how less amount of thyroxine slows down your body then let's get to how we diagnose it whenever you come to us we obviously do a physical examination a thorough history is taken and your thyroid gland is palpated and examined for enlargement obviously what happens there is a pituitary gland in your brain which controls the thyroid glands production of hormones so if thyroid produces less hormones this sends a signal to your pituitary gland okay there is less hormone so what happens your your pituitary gland produces thyroid stimulating hormone tsh thyroid stimulating hormone increases in your blood which stimulates the growth of your thyroid gland therefore in hypothyroid people many times we find enlarged neck because the growth of thyroid gland becomes so much that they become goit they have a goiter goiter is an enlarged neck so we look for that we palpate your thyroid gland if it is normal size or even smaller than normal size because of an injury or surgery or other reasons so we do that then we check your body we check for thin hair we check for coarse features of the face we, we we check for dry skin we check your reflexes and swelling all around your body we then ask for blood test obviously the blood test is the best way we check your t3 t4 tsh levels all these levels in your serum in your blood are checked then we can also check for other things like cholesterol levels complete blood counts liver enzymes prolactin sodium cortisol all these things are also checked to find out if there is any other reason contributing to your symptoms all these things are done to finally diagnose you why you have a thyroid problem if you have a thyroid problem or not so if finally if we find out that you yes you have a hypothyroid situation then the aim of the treatment is to replace the thyroid hormone that you are lacking so levothyroxine is the most commonly used medicine and you will be prescribed the lowest possible dose that relieves your symptom and brings your blood hormone levels back to normal so we will start with the lowest level and slowly increase so that we achieve this aim if you have a heart disease or if you are older your doctor will start with a very small dose and you should listen to your doctor and then people with an underactive thyroid that means who have damaged thyroid underactive thyroid will need to take this medicine for life even if they take any kind of diet so don't stop thyroid medications even if your thyroid hormone levels are coming normal while taking medications this is very important because your hormone levels are coming normal because of the medication if you stop the medications your thyroid hormone level will get again decreased when you first start the medication your doctor may check your hormone levels every 2 to 3 months after that your hormone levels should be monitored at least once every year or every 6 months if you have a normal levels then some things which you could keep in mind is do not stop taking any medication do not stop taking the medicine even after you feel better continue taking medicine exactly like your doctor has prescribed if you change the brand of your medicines tell your doctor there are certain things which can change the way your body absorbs thyroid medicines so if you are taking a lot of soy products or if you are on a very high fiber diet then you talk to your doctor so these are the two things to remember which interfere with the thyroid hormone absorption the second thing thyroid medicine works best if taken at empty stomach and when taken at least 1 hour before any other medication so you have to take thyroid hormone medication early in the morning the first thing in the morning before any other medication sometimes doctors can prescribe the medicines to be taken in the night that is also possible so don't worry about it do it as your doctor says after taking the medicine wait at least for 4 hours before you take any other fiber supplement or a calcium iron or multivitamin supplement something like an antacid or a medicines that 
bind bile acids if your bile acids are high if you are taking medicines for that don't take them for at least 4 hours after taking thyroid medication so all these things you need to consider then certain things which you need to remember there are some side effects of taking thyroid hormones also but these are not present in all people some people may have these side effects because of a higher dose that means if you take very high doses of thyroid hormones then you can have palpitations you can have weight loss you can have restlessness and shakiness you can have sweating a lot of sweating sweating and even high temperature body temperature you can feel a very warm you know all these things can happen because of high these things so in most cases thyroid hormone levels becomes normal with proper treatment there is no problem with that it's very easily manageable you are likely to take thyroid hormone medication for the rest of your life don't worry about it it's very simple no problem no major side effect happens with a regular minimum dose of thyroid hormones you can take it safely but if you don't take thyroid medications if you don't treat your hypothyroidism you can land into something serious which is called as a myxedema coma although that is very rare but if your body becomes very slow very slow very slow it can lead to infections illness it can lead to very low blood pressure very low sugar very low body temperature slow breathing unresponsiveness then very depressed mood it can lead to infections then miscarriages heart failure so myxedema coma is also a situation which can happen and it needs an emergency management and with either oxygen breathing assistance with like ventilator support fluid replacements and even intensive care nursing so a lot of things can happen if you don't treat your hypothyroidism so talk to your doctor about your hypothyroidism so what is the situation when you can actually rush to a doctor if you have hypothyroidism the first is if you have chest pain or very rapid heartbeat if you are having these situations then you need to rush to a hospital if you have an infection if the symptoms get worse or do not improve with the treatment or if you develop new symptoms then you go to the doctor again and discuss your situations this is all about hypothyroidism guys in the next video i'm going to discuss about diet in hypothyroidism and we are going to touch iodine and other factors which are required what diet should you take if you are hypothyroid what diet you should take if you are hyperthyroid what are certain things which can increase your thyroid hormones and what can decrease the absorption and why these things happen that's the most important thing you need to understand the reason before altering your lifestyle or your body so that's very important for me and should be important to you so guys stay tuned with our channel do check out other videos about thyroid as well as other factors as well as other diseases don't forget to subscribe and hit the bell icon and share these videos as much as you can Till next time, I'm Dr. Paramjit and you're watching Dr. Education. Stay connected, stay healthy.